Coming up on NBC Palm Springs, a fire breaks out in Mecca, leading to a school evacuation and concerns about power outages. We have an update from officials in a live report. And more gun violence over the 4th of July weekend in several states. We'll have those details coming up. And gusty winds continuing for the afternoon and evening hours through this week. We'll break it down the full forecast coming up. Your news starts right now. This is NBC Palm Springs. News first. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Olivia Sandusky. And I'm Tim O'Brien. Firefighters continue to work a fire in Mecca tonight. That's where we begin. Cal Fire says the so-called Lincoln Fire currently at the 30% contained at 15 acres. Now the fire started this morning near Lincoln and Avenue 64. Mecca Elementary is voluntarily evacuated due to smoke in the area. No evacuations have been issued at this time. Now, as the fire spread this afternoon, it damaged some electrical equipment, leaving residents concerned about possible power outages, especially with the summer heat. Our Carmela Karcher live in Mecca tonight with an update from the fire chief. Carmela. Yeah, Tim, IID is currently here replacing those electrical poles, and because of that, it will shut off power for about 160 homes and structures in the area and will shut off power for about an hour and a half to two hours. Now I'm going to step outside so you can see what we are looking at. Now we are standing on the corner of Lincoln and 63rd Avenue. You can see them replacing poles as we speak, and this whole parcel of land is completely burned as the fire quickly spread through the area this morning. Now, and this fire has been burning for hours. Now, a dozen or more fire trucks have been here all day. 80 firefighters on site trying to gain containment and calm the flames. Now, the vegetation out here is thick and about 20 feet tall. So when crews arrived, they found flames reaching about 40 feet in the air. Now, since we've been out here, pockets of smoke keep popping up in different locations, but they have been able to contain the flames as forward rate of spread has now stopped. But since they are replacing electrical poles, some roads in the area have closed. And we still do have some road closures. Basically, we do have access to the uh, apartment complexes along as the mobile home park, both on 63rd Avenue and 64th Avenue. But we do have uh, the roadway on Lincoln shut in between those two uh, streets. So that way we can allow for IID to do their work with the electrical infrastructure as well as our crews doing mop up along the roadways. Now, winds have picked up over the past two hours, but crews out here were anticipating the evening winds, so no concern of growth at this moment. Now, just across the street from where we are is a mobile home park and a preschool, but as of now, no structures are threatened and no evacuation orders have been put in place. Now, earlier today, like Tim mentioned, Mecca Elementary School did evacuate, but that was voluntary due to the thick smoke in the air. Now, we have gotten an update from CVUSD, and the air quality should be good enough for students to return to school tomorrow. Live in Mecca, Carmela Karcher, NBC Palm Springs. Thank you, Carmela. Now we're tracking two other fires tonight across the region, including the Sandia fire that's burning near Temecula. Cal Fire crews responded to that blaze around noon. It was spreading at a moderate rate, but crews say they have stopped the forward rate of spread. About seven acres have burned evacuation orders issued for a neighborhood nearby, and a reception center has been set up at Temecula Valley High School. In Beaumont, the Bolo fire in the area of David Mountain Road in Bolo Court burned more than eight acres and is 70% contained tonight. The evacuation orders have been lifted and no injuries have been reported. Another vegetation fire, this one in Harupa Valley, Cal Fire reporting two to five acres of vegetation burning in the Santa Ana River bottom. It's being called the Market Fire. It's closed down a few streets there. Firefighters urging the public to avoid the area for the time being. So let's take a live look outside now from our Agua Caliente Casino Cam. We know the temperatures have been warm over the last few days and pretty windy, gusty overnight, Chloe. So we're hoping, especially in our immediate region, that fire burning in Mecca, that maybe the conditions calm down a bit tonight. Yeah, I think the issue that we're seeing right now is with that onshore flow, seeing some gusty winds in the afternoon and evening hours, unfortunately, really dry across the desert, really across Southern California with that high pressure system dominating the weather. So unfortunately, I don't have the best news. We are seeing those winds pick up as we get into the evening hours. Here's a live look at those wind gusts right now. Onshore flow, as I said, winds coming from the west southwest direction, 25 mile per hour wind gusts at this hour for Palm Springs. So yeah, that system that's to the north of us is bringing those stronger gusts and they start to pick up as we get later into the evening. We saw last night 
near the 10 near Rancho Mirage. On top of that, it's those dry conditions as well across Southern California. That high pressure system that brought in those temperatures we saw over the weekend really dried us out. So we're looking at 108 in downtown Palm Springs at the airport at this hour. Humidity at a mere 5%. So yeah, we are dry here across the area, so it doesn't really help those fire conditions. Definitely a fire threat even as we get into the weekend with what we're looking at right now. Here's what we can expect for our Thursday. Nice conditions at the coast. We have that marine layer for those coastal cities, keeping those temperatures at bay. And while that high pressure system that we were talking about has moved its way a little bit to the east of us, we're still going to see those hot temperatures. So it's really actually a cooling for the next couple of days. We have those temperatures a little bit below average, but below average for us here in the desert is still those triple digits. So we'll have the triple digit temperatures and then we have those dry conditions doesn't help those conditions we're seeing right now in Mecca and in Beaumont. Here's your covered area three day forecast. We have 105 for our Thursday below average temperatures Thursday and Friday even into Saturday, but we'll start to see another warming trend on the way as that high pressure system pushes back into Southern California and parks itself over here. So we'll see those one teens as we get into the weekend. We'll break down more you can expect for the weekend weather in that full forecast coming up. Thank you, Chloe. We'll have more updates on those fires coming up at 6. But in more local news tonight, an overturned big rig shuts down part of Highway 111 in Palm Springs today. CHP issuing a SIG alert that happened just after 630 this morning. Caltrans saying all lanes were closed starting at the I-10 junction down to Angel Canyon Trail. A driver received medical attention, no word yet on their condition, and that SIG alert has since been lifted. And a reminder, just because 4th of July is over, it doesn't mean the fines are. Anyone caught illegally using, selling, and transporting fireworks can be fined up to $5,000 and face jail time uh, for up to a year. So remember, as Riverside County officials are saying, if you light it, they'll write it. Across the country tonight, a string of shootings rocked communities on the 4th of July holiday. An overnight shooting in Shreveport, Louisiana, leaves three people dead, six others injured. Now, it's not clear what led up to the gunfire, which broke up a family and community event that had taken place in that area for over a decade. This is traumatic. It is um, catastrophic at, at, at best. It is trauma for those individuals that only wanted to have a very good time um, on this holiday for families and friends. The words that I have cannot be articulated on camera, um, but I am livid as what has happened here. People running for their lives, children running for their lives, homes and lives that have been disrupted. Now, six other people that were wounded were taken to local hospitals, their condition not known at this time. And in Tampa, Florida, a child was shot and killed yesterday during a 4th of July celebration. Seven-year-old uh, pronounced dead at the hospital. Another victim shot in the hand with non-life-threatening injuries. No arrests have been made tonight. And police in Washington, D.C. continued to investigate a mass shooting that happened on Tuesday. Nine people were hurt after shots were fired from a car in a residential area. Earlier this evening, uh, shortly before 1 a.m., our six district officers responded for the report of the shooting. Upon their arrival, they learned that they had multiple victims that had been struck by gunfire. We were looking for a dark colored SUV. Investigation so far has revealed that this dark colored SUV drove through the 4700 block of Meade Street, Northeast. As it drove through the street, it stopped and it fired shots in the direction of some of our residents that were outside just celebrating the 4th of July. Uh, it appears that the shooting was targeted towards those residents and victims that were struck. Now all the victims are being treated for minor injuries. Coming up next here on NBC Palm Springs, investigations continue over more mass shootings. But tonight, a shooter has been identified after a violent night in Philadelphia. We have those details ahead. And still ahead tonight at 6, the brains behind the friendly skies ready to return to work following a lengthy strike. Right now, how tenants are standing up to one of the country's largest corporate landlords over what they say are intolerable conditions. Also in the battle of social media billionaires, Twitter facing a new and formidable competitor. We'll tell you about it tonight when we join our viewers in the West for Nightly News.
Welcome back. Authorities identify the person who they say killed five people in a mass shooting in Philadelphia on Monday. 40-year-old Kim Brady Carricker arraigned today on multiple charges, including murder. Police say the suspect appeared to fire randomly along several blocks before officers arrested him during a foot chase. And officials are ramping up safety patrols on New York's Long Island beaches following a string of possible shark attacks. In just two days, four people were reported to be bitten by sharks. Uh, the incidents happening during the busy 4th of July holiday weekend, beaches packed with people. One shark expert says Long Island has a large sand tiger shark population. It says these attacks could be caused by juveniles mistaking people for prey. While the attacks are terrifying, experts say they are still very rare. A long weekend of celebration turns deadly during a Louisiana block party, adding to the list of deadly shootings across America. Mike Valerio takes us through what happened. Amid celebrations of freedom, a sense of inescapable violence, mass shootings marring the long 4th of July weekend across America. In the birthplace of American democracy, Philadelphia, five are dead after police say a gunman wearing a bulletproof vest carrying a device that tracks first responders' radio communications opened fire with an assault weapon, shooting seemingly random victims. Point of fact is a person like that walking down a city street with an AR-15 and shooting randomly at people is a disgraceful situation in the United States of America, whether it's July 4th or any other day. Philly's district attorney not holding back about the state's gun laws. Pennsylvania's gun regulation is crap. It is crap. If you go to New Jersey, if you go to other states nearby, you go to Delaware, these states are safer and they are states that have more reasonable gun regulation. The scenes are spread across the country, from nine injured in Washington, D.C., to at least 10 people shot in Shreveport, Louisiana. Four of the Shreveport victims are dead, killed at a July 4th block party. At this point, what I am looking for is justice. In Tampa, police say an argument over jet skis led to senseless gunfire, a stray bullet killing a seven-year-old boy. There was no reason, no excuse that an argument can lead to gunfire, much less an argument over jet skis. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. Go ahead and take a live look outside from our Agua Caliente Casino cam. Blue skies out there as we seem to celebrate the 5th of July. I'm sure we'll still see some fireworks going off tonight. Chloe Carlson's in next. She's got to look at your seven day forecast and the hot temperatures we're feeling outside. Stay with us.
Welcome back. All right, before we get into the forecast, I wanted to let you know yesterday marked the unofficial hottest day on record for the entire world. That's according to the University of Maine's Climate Analyzer. The planet's average daily temperature climbing to 62.6 degrees. The milestone comes just one day after global average temperatures topped 62.2 degrees for the first time in 44 years. Scientists saying this record is likely to be the first of many over the coming months. And it was a warm 4th of July, maybe mm -hmm. not record setting for us here in the Coachella Valley, but we were out at Agua Caliente Casino last night in Rancho Mirage. We were watching the fireworks, mm -hmm. warm in the evening, got a little windy out there, but still a fun night. Yeah, I'd say the valley temperatures certainly help those numbers for the uh, oh, average sure. of the world, but yep. only here was it 108. And I was like, that doesn't feel as bad right? as it had right. been. No, I will day, say, you know? even though it broke a record, we were actually a little bit cooler <laughs> here. So had we had one of our warmer days like the weekend, it would have just yeah. broken that number even more. But yeah, a great night out of Agua Caliente Casino. No, definitely felt hot and I was good in shorts yeah. as we got late into the evening. I think it was still triple digits as we got into the show last night. So definitely some warm temperatures. We're seeing a little bit of a cooling this week as we get into this week. Here's a live look at the Walter Clark Highway 111 cam in Rancho Mirage. Clear blue skies today across the desert. We're not the only ones seeing those clear skies. Really all of Southern California with that high pressure system really drying us out. We're seeing clear skies from the floor up to the top of the atmosphere. 1 to 10 for the high today. So a little bit above average for this time of year. Record breaking numbers since we're talking record breaking numbers there. 2018 it was 100 and 17 degrees didn't quite get there today. Like I said, a little bit above average today, but that could change as we get into the coming days. We'll dip a little bit below that as we have that cooling with that low pressure system to the north of us. Our temperatures across the region at this hour are high 80s up in the high desert. 99 for desert hot springs looking to the desert floor, saying the triple digits here 104 for Coachella and Thousand Palms looking at the past 88 in a banning 73 up in Big Bear that's dropping to 44 overnight a little bit of a cooler night for those overnight temperatures we were seeing 80s a couple of days ago those will be back next week but for right now we'll stay in the 70s for those overnight temperatures for the low desert 65 up in Joshua Tree. Just to prove what's going on in our atmosphere let's take a look at the enhanced satellite typically this shows us the cold cloud tops not a lot going on as you take a look at this enhanced satellite pretty clear conditions across the entire Southern California radar going to show you more of the same, just good conditions, warm and dry. For tomorrow, whatever plans you may have for your Thursday, here's what we're looking at for highs across the area. If you want to go golfing, whatever you want to do, it's going to be triple digits for the low desert. It starts to get warm fast. 105 for Indio and Thousand Palms, 109 in Palm Springs, or 92 up at Joshua Tree. If you're heading to the coast, still 70s along the coast. Like I said, the marine layer and that strong sea breeze is going to keep those temperatures in the 70s. We'll stay in the triple digits, of course, here. As far as wind gusts, that is something that we are tracking our storyline for this week with that low pressure system to the north of us. We will see those winds pick up in the afternoon and evening hours. So keep that in mind with your commutes, especially the 10 and the 62. We're 30s up in the high desert tomorrow, 27 for 1,000 palms as you get more into the desert, Palm Desert and Palm Springs will stay in the teens. What can we expect for the weekend? Well, the high pressure system here will continue to inch its way east, bringing those temperatures a little bit cooler. But as we get into Monday next week, this ridge is going to start building again over the West Coast. This high pressure system will begin to strengthen once again and move its way back west. So that'll bring those temperatures back to those triple digits. Tropics, we do have this wave here. We are tracking a Low pressure system making some showers and thunderstorms looking to develop into a tropical depression as we get into the weekend. Here's your Comfort Air 7 day forecast 105 for our Thursday. We'll stay below average temperatures through this week, even into the weekend. But we're back to 111 by next Monday.
Welcome back in Consumer News tonight. A marathon negotiating session between UPS and the Teamsters Union ended early today, and it was without a deal. Both sides accusing the other of walking away from the table. They say the issue is money. The union hasn't publicly disclosed how big of a pay increase it wants for drivers, but the two sides have already agreed on several other issues, including putting air conditioning in their delivery cars. Well, Yahoo may be headed back to Wall Street. The company's CEO tells the Financial Times the company is is ready to come back to the public markets. It'll eventually uh, be bought by, or it was eventually rather bought by Verizon, which unloaded the company to a private investment firm in 2021. Yahoo announced layoffs earlier this year, but the CEO says it still has a huge customer traffic. And in health news tonight, Jenny Craig is making a comeback. The company says it will relaunch this fall with online coaching instead of physical centers. Customers will receive their food by delivery. The traditional Jenny Craig model went bust in May amid competition from trendy diets and weight loss drugs. Not brushing your teeth before bedtime could put your health at risk. A new study in the journal Nature found only brushing in the morning was not enough to maintain good health. Not brushing before bed could increase the risk of disease and tooth decay. Dental diseases have consistently been associated with increased risk of heart diseases. And as a person ages, health experts say it may be harder to remember names or even find words. In today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither with how to keep your brain healthy as you get older. No matter your age, taking care of your brain is critical to overall health. Cognitive decline is not inevitable as you age. And in fact, there are things you can do to maintain your brain health as you age. A new AARP report says there are six ways to help protect your brain, getting quality sleep, managing stress, staying active. What's good for your body is good for your brain. People think about exercise for their muscles, but your brain is just like that. You have to keep it engaged and moving. Eating healthy, being social, and engaging your brain can also help keep it healthy. But the organization says maintaining brain health is easier for some than others. If you live in a community where safety is an issue or you don't have sidewalks, it's harder to exercise. Access to places like uh, parks and recreation help you be social. But if you don't have those opportunities or if you are economically disadvantaged, it's a lot harder for you to just say, oh, let's go out and exercise if you're working two or three jobs. The report says technology and platforms like social media can help spread awareness about the importance of keeping brains sharp. If communities, employers, and healthcare providers are talking about brain health and making you more are aware and remembering that there are things you can do, then it makes it easier for you to sustain it. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither.
All right, before we go tonight, July 4th was a time for barbecue, but July 5th is time for a luau. Today is the time to celebrate our 50th state because it's National Hawaii Day. Hawaii officially achieved statehood August 21st, 1959. The Aloha State is honored every year on July 5th. We were talking about it during the commercial break. Tim mm -hmm. has not been to Hawaii. He's looking forward to it. But our Chloe Carlson actually lived there for a little bit. I did live there for a short time in Wahiwa, which is near the Dole Plantation. If you've ever been there, close to the North Shore. And we were talking about it. We I love the state fish. Which is? Nice. Nice. Spell uh, it, Tim, what? quick. You got Spell it? Spell it. Try it. You got it. Say it again. N-U-H-O-P. We're going to let him keep going. Uh, we have a 30-minute break. We'll see you at 6.